Chris Gale preparing to face the first ball. It's going to be Darren Goff from the pavilion end. West Indies chasing 286 at a required rate of 5.72 and over. That is a top-class cricket shot from Chris Gale. Nothing wrong with the delivery, really. Perhaps a fraction wide. Six for no wicket. Well, he always likes to stay back, Chris Gale. And he gets just enough width there. He almost stands upright and just clubs the ball through the offside. Immensely strong there. Just extends himself to his full height. Darren Goff's only picked up one wicket in the series so far. He thought he had a chance of another one here. Wasn't a particularly convincing shout. Picked out, pitched outside the leg stump, very high as well. Well, I look for singles if you can get fours like that. But usually you push around for a few singles amongst the fours. Just a subtle change in the field before this ball. Michael Vaughan had gone to a 7-2 field, which just meant Harmison gave Gale a bit of width, which he absolutely loves. Beautiful shot, four runs. Didn't quite time that one, Chris Gale. He'll get at least two for it, though. It may go all the way. This is a fast outfield. It gets there. I never would have thought he'd have gotten that far. Incredibly fast outfield, Mikey. Chris Gale hardly got half of this. And yet it went down the hill here at Lords. Kept going away from Michael Vaughan. Slightly short from Harmison. Gale pounces. Powerful man like Andrew Flintoff. And here at Lords, the ball just keeps going away from you down there towards the nursery end. That's a good shot. I don't think that's the length of the bowling on this surface, so respectable of how fast you are. 29 for 1. We certainly saw when the West Indies were in the field that these short balls didn't quite do the job that it has been doing on other surf liberty of playing that shot. Pick him. Dropped. Went through two hands there, two sets of hands. Goff has had an unlucky series so far. He's had some catches put down. This is a difficult chance from Strauss. Again, Gale going aerial. Hanging in the air. Hang time from Strauss. Possibly have caught that. England believe that their fielder should get them two wickets in a one-day international. Collingwood has dropped a half chance. Strauss a half chance. On the gap again. Again didn't time it perfectly. But again this fast outfield, it will go all the way. Beautiful shot from Chris Gale. Just that little bit of width and a little bit full. He hits a beautiful cover drive. Key man, Chris Gale, has been a quiet series. But he needs to get runs for West Indies to win. That's four. No protection for Anderson out there for Chris Gale because there is a fine leg. This shot here shows why Michael Vaughan has that field to Harmison. This is his key area, square of the wicket. Beautifully manufactured shots. Not a lot of width, but just gave his hands a little bit of room. A lot of thinking from the England captain. Where shall I go? 7-2 or 6-3? That's four again. Once you beat the infield and you time it well, it will go all the way. Fine player, Chris Gale, when there's not a lot of sideways movement, as there isn't here at Lords, his lack of feet movement makes no difference at all. He just hits through the line, and one thing he does very well is hit through the line. Just a fraction too full, I would think, from James Anderson there. 
Well, that's what happens when you have no fine leg and you're unable to maintain that line outside off stump. Where are the ball boys? Oh, there's the ball girl. She'll get it. West Indies move on to 66 for one. The partnership moves on to 50 51. Now he'll get his 50 with that. Just a little nudge on the onside. So, Chris Gale, 50 from 78 balls. 50 out of the first 97. And this is his 100th One Day International, so, so far, so good for him. That's into space, just uh, one more. Brings up the 100. So, the West Indies 100 coming up at the start of the 22nd over. Platform has been booked. That's four. That's broken the deadlock. But Dwight's happy. He's not. England applying that pressure, just keeping things quiet. West Indies looking for a boundary. It's Chris Gale that finds it. He moves on to 63. <laughs> Down towards Long Island, it's going to clear him. Robert Key took a step or two in. That's the, the usual thing that happens. You see the ball coming flat. You think it's not going to carry, then you get a horrible surprise when it goes over your head. Big moment, this Ashley Giles has tied down Gale and Gale had had enough. Chris Gale saying, that's it, enough with these attempted singles, I'm going for the maximum. Just enough on it to go for six. Straight down the ground this time. Paul Collingwood suffering this over. Massive over here for the West Indies. They've played beautifully to this point. England had a half a chance with a run out. And then both Sarwan and Gale have hit boundaries. Just as pressure was building, it has been relieved. And West Indies playing, playing this run chase absolutely spot on at the moment. That's into space. It's going to be wide of the field. It's four. Chris Gale does not deal in singles with the spinner. He does not like hitting singles. Unlike Sarwan, who comes from Guyana and plays spin a lot in Jamaica, you don't see a lot of it. And if you do see it, this is what you do with it. Now there's a chance. Oh, it would have gone, I'm sure. It hasn't been England's day in the field. Today, no chance. And he was out by a mile. Wasn't far away. Just look at this. It's all instinctive. It's just a reflex reaction. You get it into the hand. Captain. It's beaten extra cover. It's also beaten Ashley Giles at mid off. Take him! And that's great running. There's urgency there from the West Indies. Three more to Gale. Oh, there's a mix-up here. Oh, the hidden power was miles out, but Gale has completed the single. In fact, he's come back for two, and he's gone through to three figures. Forget the stuttered single. This has been a wonderful innings by Gale. 101 he is now off 141 balls. It's his uh, 900, and it's in his 100th One Day International. What a day. Well, he played very, very well, but he could have given England a real bonus getting to his 100. That's exactly where he was eyeing it up, and he's got it away through straight mid-wicket for four runs. That relieves the pressure for the West Indies. That takes the required rate under Nate and over, and the 250 comes up for the West Indies. They need 34. 
slogging at that through the mid-wicket region, Chris Gale. It was short, just evading the man at mid-wicket. It wasn't that far away. Had enough power on it to clear him, though. Straight down the ground this time. Keys there. Powell's coming back for the second. And makes it. Key. Gale wants a second run. He's taken on the throw. It's a poor one from uh, Robert Key. There are always question marks about uh, England's fielding. Away to long off. Powell wants the second run. He's going to be run out surely. No, another poor throw. And uh, England's heads are drooping here. Gale scampers through again. West Indies need just two runs to win now. Powell hits it straight to mid on. He takes the run. The throw misses the stumps. The scores are level. Powell calls for the run. Harmison's in. He hits the stumps, but Powell's beaten him. And the West Indies are home. They've beaten England here convincingly by seven wickets and take their place alongside New Zealand in the NatWest series. It's disappointment for England. Chris Gale, 132 not out, the star for the West Indies.